All right, so this is a review for the test this Friday. And uh, we start with question one. So in question one, it says, given the domain and range of the relation, and they're giving you this. This is what they're telling you uh, that you have to focus on this part right here. All right, and so um, when you look at this, the first thing you have to remember is domain is all x values. So we could start by identifying all of the domain values which are your negative 4, negative 3, 0, 3, and 5. So right away, I'm looking at A, and I'm eliminating A, and I'm eliminating D as possible answer choices. The other consideration that immediately helps you or guides you is that this one has a 0 in it. Notice that this is missing the 0, so that gets eliminated. So your answer choice here should be B as in boy. For the next question it says determine whether the relation is a function. Okay, if you recall, it has to pass the vertical line test for it to be a function. So if I were to graph this on a coordinate plane, and I have negative 6, 3, so let's assume that's somewhere about here. I have negative 1, 1, so that's about here. I have 3, negative 1, so let's assume 3, negative 1 is somewhere about here. And then I have 3, negative 2. And again, this one would be about here. Notice that this would fail. It would cross over. And so notice that these two points are being hit with the vertical line. So this is not, not a function. So your answer choice for this would be A. If you also notice, you have two y's, two separate y's for the same x value. And that's the other telltale. So if you want to do it that way, I prefer graphing it because visually it's easy to see. For number three, a lot of you um, are questioning this one. And the issue here is you see you have two y's which are distributed among x plus six. So if you do y and extract it, parentheses x plus six, and set that equal to one, I can always divide by this parentheses x plus six on both sides. And notice that you end up with just y equals, because this will cancel. So you're looking for situations where it's y equals, not y equals some, uh, you know, plus or minus x situation. In this case, it would not be uh, what you're looking for in this case. So in our case, we're good, because this is just simply y equals x plus 6. Um, it's easy. It's There's only one power on either side, so this is a function. Answer choice A for that one. Now when you look at number four, understand number four has two areas where this is, cro or three areas where this is crossing. So it fails a vertical line test, so obviously this is not a function. This one says determine uh, the function's domain and range. Um, and for this one, it is intended to sort of test your test your ability to read the graph. Um, so this one, let's see, we have the domain is insinuated to go, <coughs> excuse me, to go on infinitely. Um, as far as the range is concerned, however, the range is limited notice that we're stopping here at zero and according to this this is going as far as the five and so your choices there um, are limited so it's a bad graph in my opinion but we'll go with B for the answer choice for this one again remember this is y equals five <coughs> Excuse me again. This is y equals 0. Hence, 0, 5 is your range. The range is the distance between those two values, right? That's right here. When I look at the x, we're assuming the x is going on infinitely. And so, if that is the case, um, in either direction, um, we would select this. Again, I say this is a bad graph because if my range is limited here, then obviously my x would also terminate. Bad question. I would have thrown that out. Alright, question number six. The intervals on which um, the function is increasing. 
Remember we read these left to right, okay? So left to right, I'm focusing on the x values. Notice that from here to here, it's increasing. So one of my values is from negative two, negative one. And the other area where it's increasing, so here it's decreasing, it's going down. There it's increasing, here it's increasing again. Notice that that is from negative one, uh, as for the y, but for the, for the actual x value, it's three which is what you're going to focus on. And so this would be 3, comma, infinity, because there is no, no termination here. So this is going up. So this would be answer choice C. For number 7, they're asking you for the relative maxima and minima. That is this point and this point. So you can immediately eliminate this. This is just to trick you. Uh, you can see that the maximum is at the point, and we're going to estimate that to be 18. So we're looking at negative 2, comma, 18 for the max. And for the minimum, we're looking at 2, 14, 2, negative 14, which is um, down here. Okay, and so answer choice in this case would be A for number 7. All right, for number eight, and remember that odd functions have odd exponents, and this particular function is a parent function, it's one over x. So if I have f of, the f of x is one over x, then f of negative x is equal to negative one over x. So in other words, its opposite would be sitting over here going like this. Um, and so these are symmetric about the origin and so we could tell that this is an odd function. If it were an even function, you would have something like f of x is equal to x squared, where or x to the fourth. Notice the power is also even. You would have, in that case, y-axis symmetry. Oh, and by the way, if it's neither, <coughs> when it's neither, you would have something like x squared plus x to the third, for example. You would have a mix of exponents. Which actually leads me to this question, number 10, which I'm going to do next real quick since we're talking about this. Notice that both of these exponents are odd. This answer choice for number 10 would have to be C, odd. Alright, so we have A for this one, for number 8. Alright, evaluate piecewise function given the value of the independent variable. Here's the issue. They're telling you it's h of 1. The only place where x equals 1 is here, which means that I'm going to use this particular function. It's as easy as 1 plus 1. Done. Done, son. So that's the first 10 questions. I'm going to stop the video here um, to not let it run too, too long. And um, I hope this is helpful.